Welcome back guys. So we're gonna go over the 90D wildlife video settings, best settings for conditions, rough conditions, um, dark, cloudy, which you know, winter, most of the time that happens, early morning, almost at dark. You know, using the automatic exposure with the camera doesn't give the best results because it's, it's kind of trying to average everything out where if you know what you're doing, you can get better, better looking video, you know, less artifacts, less noise, better colors by making a few changes. So we're gonna get into that and yeah, let's, let's get moving. All right, first thing we need to do is reset your camera. Now you can, you can do this or you can bypass this. The reason why I suggest resetting your camera is it gets everyone on a, a very well-known base where if you've gone in and changed some specific settings, if I don't mention it, it might mess some things up. The settings that I do change and I do show are changing it from a standard um, reset values. So out of the box, this is kind of how I expect the camera to be set up and I change 10 or 14 settings. The rest are, you don't really have to worry about. We're not really going to go over, but just be warned if you reset your camera, like we're showing in here, you're going to mess up your custom, your custom settings, your lenses, all that could be gone. All right. The first thing for video, actually, it's kind of surprising. It's only add on is audio. The thing that kind of surprised me, even with the 90D Canon, is if you touch the body at all, the audio, the, it picks up on the audio. It's very fragile, the internal mics. I would heavily suggest you get an external mic if you're gonna do anything. In addition to this, the mic is so sensitive in this camera that as I'm adjusting, as it's doing automatic focus, you can hear it in the camera as well. It picks up that automatic focus, focusing in it. It sounds absolutely horrible. All right, the first thing we need to set is our camera in manual mode. This is allow, this is gonna allow us to adjust the ISO, shutter speed, exposure, everything. And this is very important because the automatic exposure mode or the auto mode that the 90D does, it compensates for so much. We wanna specifically set this up for wildlife. In addition to that, low light uh, wildlife to get the best, you know, best video quality with reduction of artifacts and noise. So we set it to manual mode and then we'll get start getting into the settings. Another item we need to click off is the beeps, the noise, the, the flashes. So anything we can do to reduce the noise um, footprint of this camera we want to do, we want to get rid of the beep. We want to get rid of the flash. We have one setting that we can definitely do in that. And if you guys check out my other wildlife video on other settings for the 90D, we actually talk about that a lot more and turning off the uh, exposure compensation assist focus assist lamps and that speaking of noise we want to shut off the noise reduction in video so Canon kind of applies a heavy-handed approach to noise reduction the problem is is it kind of indiscriminately washes away resolution and detail with the image we want to do this later so the situation with these settings is we can pretty much get the best video out of the camera. And if we want to improve it, enhance it with color correction, noise reduction, stabilization, we can do that later. But just know we're going to shut off noise reduction in the camera. And if we need to, we can handle it later, which a lot of times these settings absolutely reduces the amount of noise reduction it actually needs to happen. All right. So one of the first out of the exposure triangle, one of the first things we need to set is the shutter speed down the left. We want, to, we want to set it up to 1 60th of a second or 1 30th of a second. 60th of a second is the uh, 180 degree rule shutter angle. We can do that. That's about, you know, and if you really get desperate, you really want to kind of lower that ISO usage, you can go down to 1 30th of a second, drag it down there. Any less than that, you're going to screw up your video. As a safety margin, I generally use 1 60th and we'll go down to 1 30th if needed. The second setting, and we need to be cognizant of this, guys, is the widest aperture in our camera. If we're shooting with the 200 mil f2.8, you want to set it at f2.8. If we have a 5.6, a longer lens, like a 500 mil, 800 mil, set it up at f5.6 and don't move it. The problem with the auto exposure or the auto mode in video is it adjusts all that. It will set sometimes your lens to f16 or your shutter speed to f1000 or 1 1000th of a second. It just kind of messes with all that to where we know that we're going to be in low light. We need 
the lowest ISO possible to get the best image quality, and that's what we're doing. We're getting a wider aperture to get as much light in on the sensor and the slowest shutter speed amount of time to grab all this information and clean it up. ISO settings. So with the two settings, the shutter speed and aperture, here's the deal. It's not that complicated in what we're going to do. We're going to set up the ISO to automatic expose. Anywhere from one ISO 100 to 3200, you can go to 6400. But if we have that range, let the camera do the rest. We know that we had the absolute max settings on this saying 1 30th of a second shutter speed, f5.6, f2.8. We can't really do much more. Let the camera adjust the ISO, which should be pretty low, like 100, 200, 800, 400, something along those lines. Let it happen, that will work. The next thing we can change though, we can enhance this even further. Since the 90D exposes a little bit hot, a little bit warm, overexposes just a tad, we can take and manually expose minus three, minus 0.3, minus 0.7 exposure and bring that down even lower. What that does is it allows us to kind of back off the highlights if there is any and get a lower ISO rate for better quality. Even in low light, if something happens, we can kind of raise that because hopefully our, our noise level is so low that we're not going to have noise in the shadows and it's going to affect anything. So just know it. At, at every point in this, these kind of settings, we're trying to get the ISO as low as possible and then work from there. Auto light correction. This is one of the things that the camera tries to really kind of clean up your image. I turn it off in the uh, photography area and I also turn it off in video. We want to remove that because what we see on the back of the screen is how we want to play it out. That's what we really want to show. We don't want it to go into the camera and then have the camera, ah, you know, I want to raise the shadows. I want to do this. I want to do that. We can do that all later. We just need the best quality image coming into the camera that's not modified by the camera, by the artificial intelligence, because it's not quite as intelligent as we can do it by ourselves later. All right, autofocus tracking, dual pixel. So the Canon 90D actually has some very good autofocus tracking. Um, so I leave it on the face eye detect, continuous focus, which we'll see in a sec, but just know that it works very well. The 4K works pretty doggone good. Compared to the M50, it is night way advanced past the M50 and M200, which we'll talk about, but there's ways to even improve the focus system down in the choices down below. I'll, I'll show you um, some enhancement, but just know that 4K autofocus tracking works. Frames per second, we wanna go 4K, 30 frames per second, 24 frames a second. That's your choice. I'd kind of go with 30 frames a second. It's just for standard video, it just seems to look right. Shutter button recording. So the shutter button recording um, is on the top of the camera. It's not enabled naturally. So you have this little back button that kind of makes you kind of punch it and it, it makes things jittery. Thing is on the top of the button, the shutter, shutter record button, just hit that little guy and you can do it smoother. You can go on and off. It's not like you kick it and you kind of see the camera turn on and it bounces around. It, it seems a lot more relaxed and you can go on and off and it's a natural process. It's actually much more natural, just like a regular camera. You have that shutter button. I don't know why they don't enable that out of the box, but just know that, that that's the way it's set up and it's much easier than fumbling behind. And there's this little record button that you got to click on all the time. Okay. Picture profile. What we want to try to do here is put a neutral. So neutral profile doesn't oversaturate things, it doesn't undersaturate things. It puts it kind of in the middle for you to adjust accordingly. So if you have some scenes that are heavily saturated, you can back that off a little. You're not overexposed. A lot of times in wildlife, um, you have a super pink bird or a red bird that's oversaturated. If you have vivid uh, video quality, it's gonna over enhance the red or the pink feathers of this animal and you won't be able to draw it back. You lose detail and it will just look like a red or pink mess of feathers to where if you use neutral, then you can bump it up if you need to, or you can back it off. So it gives you the option of being able to adjust kind of in all different scenes, highlights, low lights, colors, all that. You're not overexposing or underexposing. It gives you the best adjustment. Now, a lot of people say, well, I don't really want to adjust my video. Don't worry about it. It looks fine. Just with a minor tweak, you can, you can make it look awesome.
continuous focus. That's that AI servo. I leave it on actually. This is one of the things that I think it just works well. It works well with the continuous tracking, um, autofocus tracking, continuous servers, always kind of negotiate and kind of feel where it's at. That 4K, that's one thing with Canon, their dual pixel autofocus works well. It works very smooth. I trust it enough. I think, I think it, you could put it on and be somewhat happy. If it gives you problems, just turn it off. But yeah, I, I think it works good enough. All right, your choice. There's two options down below on the slide that I presented of your choice, and that's 1080p and 4K video. Why is that a choice? I want the best video, right? Well, here's the situation, the truth of this. The Canon R5, which isn't this camera we're talking about, um, does 8K video. The autofocus tracking is slower in 8K than it is in 4K. And the 4K is slower than it is in 1080p. So let's say you have something that's moving fast and the focus just isn't keeping up with it. Go to 1080p. Now on the M200 and the M50, if you've seen some other videos there, the 4K video is absolutely almost unusable for autofocus tracking. Any kind of tracking, it's so slow and it's so cropped in, it's very difficult to use. The data rates aren't all that great as well. But the 1080p, I'm filming this on the M50 1080p, it does awesome. It just does not give up. The focus is really, really good in comparison to most cameras. It, it's very impressive. Uh, Thomas Heaton uses the M50 or used to. And it, it stuck to him like rock. He used that everywhere in the world. So it does well. Just know that you have this choice. If it's low light or if your, your tracking is, is kind of missing or if it's a little too slow, go to 1080p and it will speed it up. Because on M200 and M50, it's like glue through long lenses. And I really impressed. People say, well, 1080p is not that great. But you got to under, understand, there's a lot of still in today production cinema cameras that are 1080p and 2K. They're not 4K, but the image quality is so good. Trust 1080p, give it a look. Because I would take the 1080p and the M50 over just about any cell phone. I have a Samsung S20 that does 8K video, and it's pretty much garbage with all the artifacting and everything that it does. I can't control it. It's pretty much worthless. 1080p from this camera, I'd take all day long over that Samsung. There's a setting that allows you to crop in and just use the sensor, the area of the sensor for 4K video. What this allows you to do is just use that small segment of the 4K sensor, of the 32 megapixels of that 4K and use that for video. That allows you to punch in per se. So you're, it could, it, I think it's like a 1.5 or 2.0 crop. So if you have 600 mil lens, you know, you have your 1.6 APS-C crop and then you have like a 1.7 digital crop that's just using the sensor, that smaller part of the sensor that you got to take a look at. So that allows you for wildlife to get really close in there. It's pretty nice. I actually used this in my uh, Badger video. When I was photographing Badger, I had a, a 600 mil, 960 mil equivalent, but then I put on the digital DC crop and got out there about 12 or 1300 millimeters and it did all right. It did, it did pretty good, but we can still further enhance this. Now, this is the other thing is the IS crop, image stabilization digital video crop. There are two modes in addition to the regular sensor crop. Check this out. IS crop has like a 1.4 or something and the other one's like a 2.0. What this allows you to do is even crop in further. So for instance, if you have a 600 mil, if you use the DC or the, the one to one pixel crop, you've got a 1.6 crop of APS-C, you have a digital crop using just the sensors might be 2.0. And then you have an IS crop on top of that. If you want for image stabilization crop could be like a 1.2 or 2.2 on that. What the IS digital crop does is it, it kind of punches in even more and then it, it kind of stabilizes the image and delays it for you. Now, for the most part, I turn all that off until I see an animal and actually want to see how close I can get. If I can't get close enough, close enough, I'll do the initial pixel to pixel crop on the 90D, which will bring me in even closer. And then if I'm having stabilization issues, I might use the digital IS stabilization, the one or in the enhanced. I generally don't use those, but just know that they're available if you're really shaky. 
you can clean up if you don't want to do any post-processing on video for for stabilization and you want it really stable use it if if you if you feel you need it if not that's fine as well anyway guys i hope this helps if you got comments questions concerns right down below and i will see you next week